That's right. It is Friday morning time for the first federal program joined in studio today by Evan and Stick has decided to stay home. <laughs> Good morning, Paul. How you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. It's nice to be in here. Hey, we just saw a beautiful sunrise. Yes. <clears throat> it's kind of nice to be able to come right after something that beautiful. Yeah, especially on a beautiful morning. Well, we're going to have some good weather finally. Yesterday was awesome and gorgeous. Did a little grilling last night. We're outside with the kids. Boy, that's a relief. Mm. You shut in for a while and you really, in the winter, it's, it gets a little grim there for a while. So, yeah. We're thrilled with some better weather. We can handle some rain as long as the temperatures keep going up a little bit. You know, that's my exact same thought. I'll take the rain at 65 degrees over no rain in 35. Yeah, it, it's it's good. Spring is coming. You can see signs of it all over. That's a good thing. Well, I saw recently yesterday that uh, coronavirus infections are a million people worldwide now, and that's doubled in the last week. 50,000 deaths. Definitely something that's gonna we're gonna be living with for quite a while. I think. Yeah. Crazy times. So we've got a great guest this morning. We'll be talking with Mary Kay from the Compassionate Health Clinic in a little bit, and we can find out some more about um, what the clinic is doing in these stranger times and how it's affecting things for them and some of the services they're offering, and also maybe get a little recap of how 2019 went for the Compassionate Health Clinic. Um, also yesterday announced that Indiana schools are closed for the rest of the school year. Yeah, I know. My kids are so thrilled about that. <laughs> Forced homeschooling. Well, yeah. not, maybe not quite. They do have a lot of resources to keep things, keep the learning flowing, uh, even when kids are home, which is nice. But boy, it gets a little awkward sometimes. When, mm. uh, I, I had a friend ask us if Emily and I had uh, had had many classes at the University of Indianapolis about education. I don't remember even one. So that I'm not very well suited for. Uh, for the classroom education, it takes yeah. a real gift for that. Yeah. So, but every parent is now a teacher. Got a whole new <laughs> career the rest of the year. At least the support. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Support. more there of the support. Hey, Tanner, welcome. Morning. We got uh, everything dialed in over there. I think so. Okay, we're good to go. Okay, good. Hey, we've got some good trivia this morning. We're, you know, I feel bad for Tanner since sports are all shut down. The guy is just... It's, yeah, it's a little uh, depressing, but... So if we can get the sports in the trivia and kind of keep... Makes you feel a little better. Yeah, some yeah. information flowing. So I appreciated this one a lot. <laughs> since the Final Four would have been this weekend, what school has the most all-time Final Four appearances? A, Indiana. B, UCLA. C, North Carolina. And Paul's got three trivias in a row. So. Which is why he went to sports. I'm not a sports guy. I'm going to stump him. <laughs> now you're just you're figuring out my logic and my theory here, so I don't like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, but I do have a little sports news to go over this week. Of course, not a lot of anything really going on. Breaking news. But uh, the uh, NCAA did grant all for spring sport athletes another year of eligibility if they wanted. So... Thought that was the right thing. You know, a lot of times the NCAs didn't question are they doing the right thing for the student athletes. I think this was the right move. That's good. Um, and it's interesting though for the seniors. You know, I, I've seen where some of them are going to take their fifth year, or in some cases sixth year, and some are just going to move on to post sports career. So it'd be a tough decision. It I would. Um, I'm still interested to see how it throws off. I mean, what are they going to do with the scholarship numbers? Because you got certain amount of freshmen coming in for every program and I'm sure that all is going to work itself out somehow but that's the kind of decision making that's just going crazy yeah. in, these, in these times in every single yeah. business the uh, NCAA did uh, not grant the winter athletes another year which I understand I mean it's too bad but in a lot of cases they played at least 80 to 85 percent of their season if not 90 percent or more yeah. I mean some schools the smaller schools for basketball they were already done it's hard so, to say you have a full redo. Exactly, for a couple games. So it's unfortunate, but kind of is what it is there. Uh, the Olympics have officially been moved to next year, <coughs> 2021, July 23rd through August 8th. So it was speculated it was going to be moved, but now official. That's smart. Yeah, yeah. And at least these athletes now know they have a target date to train for. And, so, you know, you don't want to be having a major athletic no. competition with so much anxiety. It just doesn't anxiety, work well. representatives from all around the world. I mean, just, just not, not, smart. not smart right now. So. Yeah. 
and that's an event that gets planned so far ahead of time. So smart, at least now they got a target name for next year, and they can get going and ready for that. So the host country is probably really good. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, Tokyo, yeah, or Tokyo, Japan, I should say. Yeah, I would think they're probably. And I think they kind of pushed more for that change sure. than maybe some of the other countries. Sure. Do. Uh, a few other big sporting events. Wimbledon got canceled for the first time since the World War II. So, and then the uh, British Open or the Open Championship is now called in golf. It was interesting. It was reported the other night that it was going to be canceled by the RNA. Now they're kind of rethinking it. So it's not officially canceled yet. I was wondering why they just didn't postpone it at first and then cancel it later. So maybe that's what they're going to do. Because that's not till July. And the other big golf tournaments are postponing, but not canceling, hoping, it, you know, push them back and then get them played. But It'd be nice if they could get the big four in. It would. It would. I mean, cancel least, a different one. Exactly. <laughs> it would make it something of the season. So, But speaking of golf, there is a still kind of a rumor right now, but Phil Mickelson tweeted that he's in the works of trying to get a, another match between him and Tiger Woods Ooh. that would take place next month in May, and all the proceeds would go to the coronavirus relief. But there's a little twist this time from the original t- first match they had. Uh, Tom Brady and Peyton Manning would be involved, too. I think it would be Peyton and Tiger versus Tom and Phil. That's awesome. Match play. That would, I would think that might be the most ordered sporting event <laughs> history because people are dying for we're talking pay per view I'm guessing yeah. it would be pay per view. That's what their first match was. Right. And if all the money is going to a good cause. I would think that's the way they would go. So wow. it'll be interesting to see if they can pull that off. Uh, it's been it's rumored for next month. So. Great rivalries. Yeah, that'd be that'd be awesome. So hopefully, hopefully they can pull that off. But other than that, there's not much going on. Yeah, tough times. Yeah. Sorry, Tanner. Uh, I I think you know when sports does come back, I think we're all going to appreciate sports a lot more than we ever did. Yeah, I know the uh, previous morning guy's going nuts because he's big into sports betting and he has nothing to bet on right now. He's, he's <laughs> yep. losing his mind. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Cold turkey. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we got any tidbits this morning? Oh, yes, we do. Yeah, see, I forgot my script this morning, so Evan's um, let me borrow the script. Yeah, we're big on teamwork at First Federal. On fire this morning. So. <laughs> uh, on this day in 1948, U.S. President Harry Truman signed the Marshall Plan which uh, gave $5 billion to, dollars to 16 European countries. I had heard of that plan, but I didn't ever know really what it was about. So, Was it for them to uh, kind of up their defense? Yes. Okay. Yep. So Probably smart. On this day, 1968, movie Planet of the Apes made its U.S. premiere. I don't know how many variations of those movies that make sense. <laughs> There's been a, like a lot. A few. But Have you seen that original one, Tanner? Not the 1968 one. I, oh, I've seen one of the newer ones, but... It's cool. Yeah. You're a Charlton Heston fan? Yeah. Don't even know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk later. All right. <laughs> on this day in 2000, Michigan State beat Florida six or 89-76 to win the 62nd NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. That was the Big Ten's last champion. Oh, my gosh. Was that Mateen Cleaves? Yep, okay. Mateen Cleaves and Maurice Patterson. And wow. Or Peterson, yeah. Um, a long time ago, the Big Ten's had teams make the championship, but just not been able to bring it that's home. Not, that's not good. No. So. And today is National Chocolate Moose Day. <laughs> it's also Walk to Work Day. Uh, if you walk to work, just make sure. Separation. No, separation. No buddies. <laughs> World Party Day. This one I don't really understand. Poet in a Cupcake Day. Uh. Find a Rainbow Day. Fish Fingers and Custard Day. Oh my god. And Tweed Day. A little bit of everything like usual. Yeah. So far I'm over on those. Well, before, yeah, me too. <laughs> the me World too. Party Day. That one's yeah, been canceled this year. Yeah, yeah. I, was say, I don't think we can do that one yeah, this year. No. <laughs> Unless Next we year. all party from our houses. Yeah, we just, got, you know, got two or three people. And do a Zoom party or something. Well, yeah. that's what I was just going to talk about. We don't really have a lot of upcoming events in the community <laughs> based no. on the way things are now. But uh, 
I've been seeing more uh, Zoom family mm -hmm. get-togethers and things like that, so that people get creative and use relevant technology. Did one with my family earlier this week. We did a Zoom meeting. And it took a while to get everybody set up and going, <laughs> but it was fun. Good time. Yeah, you need those family IT support people yeah. these days to help keep things moving forward. <laughs> <That's> for <sure. laughs> High demand. <laughs> well, we did want to give out some flowers this morning. Uh, we've got Rochester High School's Jordan Jennings and Tippie Valley's Quentin Allen. They were named two of 50 Indiana High School seniors, uh, 2020 Indiana Academic All-Star Regional Honorees. Big honor and uh, congratulations to them. And then also to my Gotchuck Realty family, Mary and I were talking about this a little bit earlier. Um, our Gotchuck Realty will still continue serving Fulton County, which is exciting for our family uh, with Gwen, Susan, and Lori there, but the names changed to listing leaders. I just wanted to give a uh, flowers to my grandparents, Bob and Elaine Gotchuck, who started Gotchuck Realty in January 1972, before I was born. And uh, they retired in 1991, and then... Of course, their kids, Steve Gottschalk and Connie Hudkins, worked at Gottschalk Realty for many years. And my dad's retiring this week after over 45 years of service to Fulton County wow. with, yeah. in real estate for home buyers and sellers. And uh, he was telling me his first sale was in 1974 for $17,000. And uh, I often think about how many times he's been in some of our homes that we have here in Fulton County. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah. sold them five or six times <laughs> yeah, or three or four right. times or, or who knows. But I remember back in that day buying our first home and thinking about that same amount of money was all the money in the entire world. <laughs> <also. laughs> Isn't that funny yeah. how times change as we grow up? But uh, flowers to Gottschalk Realty, and it's kind of a sad day to see the sign change over, but we are happy for the new owner and, um, and of course, that when Susan and Lori will still be there helping people, as always. Well, money news. Sports news is kind of boring these days, but money news is uh, gets pretty exciting day to day. There's uh, a lot of changes every day and a lot of things to kind of keep track of. I think investors don't really know what to think, and that makes for some pretty choppy uh, markets. The Dow was up 450 points yesterday, but it's down 2% for the week, which, you know, a few months ago, these kind of numbers up and down, we just were so rare we never would see. Um, but we're expecting the roller coaster to continue. We're going to get continue to get kind of low economic data. It'll it'll keep coming in worse and worse as our separation um, takes hold in the data. And uh, for instance, six million unemployed last week, new uh, new unemployed requests, which. Um, it, historically extremely high we know why just because things are shut down so those things some of them will bounce back pretty well but right now that's the news in the money area um, but we did get some good news in the oil markets there's been a huge supply of oil worldwide and everyone's still producing at high levels and you've noticed that at the gas tanks um, with my nice Kroger discount I, I think I was only charged 90 cents a gallon the other day, <laughs> which is crazy. That reminds me when I first got my license. Those were the, kind of some of the prices back then. Yeah. You could uh, cruise Main Street for pretty cheap. <laughs> so uh, it was announced yesterday that maybe Russia and Saudi Arabia might be um, doing some supply cuts, which should help oil companies that may increase our, our cost of gas just a little bit. We're wondering if investors' nerves can handle however long this pandemic may be going on so um, week to week it's very interesting right now in the money world and rates on things have been up and down a little bit as well um, economic recovery economists think that maybe things will bounce back fairly quickly in second half of the year depending on how long we're shut down um, from getting together and and our entertainment spending so this is all going to be on the backs of the good old american consumer once we're allowed to interact again We'll see how, how well we step up to the plate there. Um, thinking about First Federal, of course we're closed, our lobbies are closed at all of our branches. Um, we're gonna continue that for the foreseeable future right now and kind of take a week to week look at that, but um, don't see that changing anytime soon. We do have our drive, drive ups open, so you can come on in, um, normal work hours, drive into any of our lanes and we'll help you um, on a variety of things through that method. Um, if you have a loan appointment, we're still taking appointments for those. Um, we're doing a lot of that electronically, though, as well. So we can really support 
um, your mortgage loan transactions really without even seeing you now. So that's an option that you have. If you want to get together, we can still make that work as well. And we're doing a lot of curbside closings, which has become a new, that's probably been hashtag Tanner. I bet that's trending right now. <laughs> yeah, I bet it is. You're right. <laughs> a lot of those going on right now. <laughs> Hey, uh, a little hot tip in the drive-thru too, um, if you have your account number ready with you, um, that can help speed things along for you and for everyone else. And if you don't have um, those numbers handy, we can even write them down on a card for you next time you come through. And then the, the, the time after that, just send the card in with what you want to do and that'll help us help you in a much quicker way since all traffic goes through that method right now. So a little hot tip there from the banker. Um, ATMs open for deposits and withdrawals. Some people didn't know you could make deposits there, but you can do that 24-7 as well. Cash and check. That's right. You've tried it. Thank you, yes. Paul. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, uh, our website, www.firstfederalbanking.com. Um, you can sign up for online banking and get started right away. Uh, we also have our mobile banking app you can find on the app stores, um, whether you have Android or Apple. And uh, we have thousands of online banking and mobile banking users. Very satisfied. You can see your balances and your transactions. You can uh, make mobile check deposits as well without leaving your house if you don't want to drive to the ATM or, or come through the drive up. You can quickly pay bills as you get them or you can schedule them for the future to pay uh, when you want them to. Um, and you can get e-bills so you don't have to get them in the mail if you don't want to with certain vendors. So. A lot of options there. You can send or request money from individuals, and that's now in real time. So I could send, Mary, I could send you some money right now, and you'd get it be great. here before we even start interviewing <laughs> <All> you. <right. laughs> so check those things out. Uh, these days, those tools may make your life a little bit easier since we're restricted from um, getting together quite as much to help you. Uh, mortgage rates are still very, very low, so a great time to purchase a home or refinance your current mortgage. Um, might save you money on your monthly payment, refinancing to a lower rate. Also consider a very flexible home equity line of credit loan. Um, with these uncertain times, that may be a tool that helps you manage things here in the short term. Um, not very uh, expensive rate at all on a home equity line of credit, and you can control how much is borrowed and paid back. A really convenient tool. Our loan originators, Ben Dalton, John Schaefer, and Stacy Wilson here in Rochester can provide you with more details. Our phone number is 574-223-2128. We are still opening checking savings and CD accounts through the drive-thru. <laughs> <laughs> Call in first and we'll start getting all that set up and then you can come through and we can send you the paperwork and, and take care of it that way. We're doing quite a bit of that. So right now with the new checking account, we're giving away a, a tool set, Ironworks 142 piece tool set with every new checking account that's open. So come on. Come on through, not in, and we'll take care of you there. And uh, if you have any business lending needs, contact Lindy Breeden for more information. His cell phone number is 574-551-6890, and he can get started with you on any business needs. And then also financial services. We were talking about the markets. Well, sometimes when the markets are down, it's a great time to initiate some long-term planning. Contact Mark Bluebar, Brian Bell today for more information. And then Tanner does a great job with our social media identities on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and we also have videos on our YouTube channel. So check those out, follow us, and uh, we will keep you up to date on all things First Federal. We are a member of FDIC and an equal housing lender, and our NMLS number is 399927. While well, we're here at the highlight of our show, Welcoming you, Mary Kay, Executive Director of Fulton County Compassionate Health Center, to our show. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a little while since we've had you in, and I'm pleased to have you this morning. I'd usually be here giving you a wrap-up of the last year, which That's I right. do want to start with. Okay. Um, we actually opened 10 years ago. So we have been around for 10 years now. Congratulations. A pretty amazing thing for Fulton County. That's longer have. than I would, would have guessed this morning. 10 years. We celebrated that in August of last year. And we did finish 2019 with our busiest year in about five years. Um, if everybody kind of remembers back to when Obamacare was enacted, uh, the Affordable Care Act, uh, that did cause a big decline in our patient numbers. 
it was a good thing that more people were able to afford insurance, um, but that did really cause a decrease in our numbers of the people uh, who were uninsured that needed health care. Okay. But as that has sort of evolved, and there was a, an article in the paper yesterday about um, the positives and negatives that, that we have seen of the Affordable Care Act, uh, one of those being that it's truly not affordable uh, for many people, and so people are finding themselves um, sort of insurance poor. Uh, they might be able to afford the premium, uh, but then all of a sudden something happens and they find themselves with a huge deductible and no ability to pay that two or $3,000 deductible that all of a sudden hits them yeah. every year. Wow. Um, so we did see a real rise in our patient numbers last year. Uh, just people saying we've got to decide whether we can still afford to be insured or not. And there is no longer the penalty anymore. So, so there's um, a real choice there now. There again. is a choice whether you want to be insured um, or whether you want to utilize a free clinic. And we're just one of about 1,200 clinics across the country um, that offer that sort of service to patients who find themselves without health care. But we did end the year very, very positive on our number, both of patients and visits. Um, unfortunately, when people are not insured, they wait until they're extremely ill to go to the doctor. And so then we find them knocking on our door uh, with an awful, awful prognosis and uh, needing help pretty urgently. So we found more patients and a higher acuity, or in other words, sicker people knocking on our door. So a, a better idea would be to come in and get the regular care as you're going. So Absolutely. That when you start to get sick, you can you already know what you need to do and how to get it treated. And you've just hit on the biggest reason that Woodlawn Hospital is our biggest supporter. Uh, we are independent. We are not owned by the hospital. We are run by a nonprofit board. We're a 501c3 charitable organization. And yet, we have such a good relationship with Woodlawn Hospital because we keep people out of the hospital. Um, it is a lot easier to keep people well and much cheaper than to treat people when they're extremely ill. So we want people to come when they're well. We want to see what you look like well. We want to get you on a wellness routine and keep you well and out of the hospital. So it's such a great uh, relationship that we have with the hospital. I was hearing this morning that one COVID patient could cost the hospital easily twenty to thirty thousand wow. dollars easily if you're not insured. And so we want to keep those people out of the hospital. We want to keep them well and not getting the virus uh, because that could devastate a hospital pretty quickly. Mary, is that part of kind of your consultation with the new patient when they're coming in is really and kind of train or teach them the maybe the best way of utilizing the clinic? We talk to them about a lot of things. Uh, one of the biggest things we talk to them about is not abusing the emergency department. Uh, one of the common things when you're uninsured is again, you have no physician, and so for any small thing, you decide that the ER is your best route. It's actually the most expensive way to obtain health care, and that's before all of this hit us. So, you know, the okay. person who went to the ER for a scratchy throat, uh, that cost the hospital a lot of money uh, in bad debt. And so it's so much better to have a place like our clinic where you can come and we can get you an antibiotic than you utilizing the emergency department. Is Almost there, nearly impossible now to utilize the emergency department in that way. So there's been a real tangible benefit for these 10 years relationship between the clinic and the hospital and, and keeping, trying, doing a better job of keeping things relevant for the emergency care area. We ask every patient when they come in for their appointment, if we were not open, would you have gone to the emergency room? So that's a tangible number that I can give to the hospital. That's good. And so I can show them that in any given year we save them a huge amount of money. I mean, we're talking over 10 years. I can document just in those yes answers, which are certainly not the full scope of what we've saved, right. but we can document $3 million in bad debt that was saved that's in black and white numbers. Incredible. So, um, you know, much, much more than that, probably, you know, 10 times that in what we've actually saved them in bad debt. 
Um, but those are tangible numbers we can show them that we've saved. What a great partnership. It is. We're speaking with Mary Kay, the Executive Director of Fulton County Compassionate Health Clinic this morning. So things have changed again this year. <laughs> Tell us what's happening oh now with goodness. a lot of the the infectious concern and, and some of our distancing that we're doing. Well, first of all, we want to make sure people understand we are still open and we don't plan to close. Um, this week there was a USA um, Today article that said a lot of Americans, actually they estimated about 31 million Americans today depend on free health clinics. Wow. So across wow. the country, about and that was before all of this job loss. So previous to all of what's going on now, about 31 million people across the United States depended on some sort of free or charitable health clinic for their total health care. And so their fear is this will close many of those clinics. And they cited several reasons. Uh, one of the reasons is a decline in donations. You know, you talked about the market. So a lot of our donations do come from people who are retired. They've set up some funding that they want to continue to support good organizations in their community. With the market being so uncertain, a lot of people are saying, I can't afford to do that anymore. Yeah. So that was one of the reasons they cited. Another reason they cited was the uncertainty of federal funding. Uh, for us, our malpractice insurance is free through the federal government. So well, that's a huge benefit. free clinics are able to utilize that. That is funding that is approved every year okay. by the federal government in their budget. So there's a fear, you know, how will that continue? Another real big concern is the majority of volunteers, and we are so similar in that, that most of our volunteers are in that age group that are at high risk for COVID. So we have asked all our volunteers to stay at home. And so that was another reason they cited that they were fearful these clinics would close. Um, another one was that few clinics had a plan for any sort of pandemic outbreak. But I'm here to tell you, few people, period, had a plan <laughs> for a pandemic. <laughs> I mean, this is kind of like a sci-fi movie that we're in right now. It's like wartime. So yeah. it, it is. Um, and then lastly, um, they said, what do most of us rely on? 501c3s rely on fundraisers. We're not any different. We have a big golf outing that we have every That's right. year. It brings in about 15% of our total operating funds. We don't know if we'll have that or, or when we'll have it. So those were the five reasons that USA Today said they're fearful if these clinics across the country close, what will these Americans do? And Evan and I were talking earlier, uh, we're seeing people who were insured just a couple of weeks ago and employed who through f no fault of their own now all of a sudden find themselves unemployed and without insurance. So we are not closing, we are not going away. I think whenever there is an urgent issue like this, you have to step up and we're here to step up and take care of people of Fulton County. We, we talk about it at the bank is our time to shine, and I think it's the same with the Compassionate Health Clinic. This is, this is the time right now when the need is the greatest. Absolutely. We just a year ago talked about our numbers had really not changed much, and were we still needed, and we said we were. And Good answer. Now, <laughs> Good now answer. Now we know we really are we're needed. So we're still open. Uh, we did go down to just a very restricted flow. Our doors locked. We're there Monday through Thursday, 9 to 4, just like we always are, but the door is locked. So you can't just come in. Mostly we're trying to protect everyone else. Someone walks in the door that is COVID positive, we have to shut the door. I mean, yeah. we are then contaminated. Right. So we are screening people in the parking lot with personal protective equipment on. So uh, it, in, in the first couple of days, we did have a lot of calls. I have a fever in the sniffles. I think I have it. There was a lot of panic, you know, a lot Absolutely. of unknown. Mm -hmm. And we just kept saying, calm down, you know, we're, we're here to take care of you. So we've got a set of questions we ask. So we are there every day. We're still taking care of our patients. We are still filling their prescription needs. And people still are getting sick with other things 
other illnesses didn't go away. Right. And so with the emergency room on a real lockdown, we are there to help our patients through some of these lesser illnesses. Jamie is doing a lot of telemedicine. So thank goodness for IT. Please don't, you know, don't go away from IT. <laughs> uh, it's helping us all now That's through great. these uncertain times. Um, and we're there to answer questions. We are not renewing cards right now. Okay. And so we're working with the hospital and saying if they come in with an expired card from us, please still take care of them. We just can't bring them in and do their annual renewal. But we're urging our patients to call us and confirm they still want to be our patient. We, we do need to know that from okay. them. New patients, we bring you in, go through a whole interview, get a lot of data from you, a lot of paperwork, and Jamie would do an extended visit. We are not able to do that right now, but we're still taking new patients. So anyone who's finding themselves without insurance can call Monday through Friday, nine to four. We'll walk them, I said Monday through Friday, Monday through Thursday, uh, nine to four. We will walk them through what they need to become a patient and we'll make every effort to make them a new patient. It's just, everything's a little different right now. I totally understand that. Thank you so much for what you're doing here in the community and continuing to do. You're still open. That's the we biggest are still open. message from today. Give us a, that phone number that you mentioned you'd like people it to call. It is 574-223-6080. Okay. And then also, uh, still accepting donations and funding is it's so important, it sounds like. It is. And, and uncertain. Uncertain right now. And, and it's it's really kind of scary. We do have money in the bank, so we're, we're not going to close because we don't have any money to, you know, continue day to day. But that won't last long. We are already projected a loss this year. Last year, outside of our golf outing, which is usually our, our only ask of people in a year, we only had 10 people who donated to us. Wow. And that was in a good year. So we are fearful of donations ceasing for us. So $10, $5, it does make a difference for us. And every penny spent right here. Well, thank you for supporting Fulton County. And I, I believe Fulton County will be here to continue supporting you guys as well. They'll step so. up, I'm sure. Hopefully we have some listeners interested uh, with the heart for this as well. Well, thank you, Mary, for joining us so much. We appreciated having you, and, and thank you so much for what you're doing here for our Fulton County thank you citizens. All. The bank has been a, a big supporter. We appreciate that. We do have a Facebook page, and we try to keep people up to date on that as to what we're doing and our patients, too. Great source of info. Okay, we're going to move to our trivia question. Since the Final Four would have been this weekend, what school has the most all-time Final Four appearances? Paul, Indiana, UCLA, or North Carolina? You know, I can recall being in elementary school and everybody had North Carolina gear, so I'm going North Carolina. Four in a row. You got Tanner again. 20 Final Four appearances. That's Get incredible. <laughs> Paul, you just start doing this. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Our words of wisdom this morning are from Robert Collier, an American author. Success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out, day by day, hour by hour. Great advice. All right, I look forward to talking to you guys next week. Thanks, Paul.